Have you ever wondered why you had that bad dream? That nightmare? Who was behind it? Could it be the devil or demons? Watch this video to find out. Can the realm of darkness have any hand in our dreams? Let's consider Ephesians 6 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. No doubt we deal with an unseen world in a lot of things we cannot explain or even comprehend. Check out this one clip from Tom and Jerry where it shows that the devil is the president of Hollywood. It's the sir, world. sir, it's him. gives me the creeps, sir. He's the president of Hollywood. He's supposed to give you the creeps. <laughs> Greetings, your tinsliness, imperious leader of Hollywood. Now that we know that the devil is the president of Hollywood, let's see another movie that he may have influenced and put his real agenda out there for us to see. Let's check out that clip as well. Dreams are my speciality. Through dreams, I influence mankind. My dream is of eternity. <laughs> We don't exactly know what kind of access the devil has been granted to us, but we see a glimpse in the book of Job. Job 1, 9 through 12. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. We see the devil is allowed to attack Job in any way imaginable except killing him. So naturally the devil comes at him through his friends and one way is infiltrating their dreams to get them to say the things he wants. Let's see that in Job 4, 13 through 19, we have an example of a dream in which a demon is involved and Eliphaz the Temanite declares, in disquieting thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones shake. Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair on my body stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern its appearance. A form was before my eyes. There was silence. Then I heard a voice saying, Can a mortal be more righteous than God? Can a man be more pure than his maker? If he puts no trust in his servants, if he charges his angels with error, how much more those who dwell in houses of clay? Eliphaz describes a dream in which he saw a demon, a spirit, how do we know this was a demon? By his message. His message is extremely deceitful. He says that God puts no trust in his servants, as if to imply or to state that God doesn't trust any of his angels, which is a lie. God certainly charged some of his angels with error, verse 18, and rightly so, because they sin, as mentioned in Revelations 12, 4 and Jude 6. But God does put his trust in his angels. Hebrews 1, 14 exemplifies. This passage is difficult to interpret properly. So many questions arise. However, it is significant that the demonic form proceeded to give Eliphaz the working outline for Job's three friends to use in judging and tormenting Job for the next 30 chapters or so. 
When I say my bed will comfort me, my couch will ease my complaint, then you scare me with dreams and terrify me with visions. What is happening here? Then Job is tormented as well. There was a time when I had two demonic attacks in my dreams as well. I was laying in my bed. The closet door opened. <laughs> and then I woke up instantly. Then the second dream, I was actually at ministry school and something very similar took place. Everything was just in its right place in my room. Then my bathroom door flung open and here comes another demon screaming at me in my face, trying to scare me, make me to be afraid. But at this time I was already immersed in the Lord and His Word and in praise. And at this point in time, I was not fearful at all. And I screamed back in the demon's face, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I woke up instantly again. But there's something powerful in the name of Jesus. Do you want to know how to fight against these demons? Check this out. You rebuke them in the name of Jesus. You use scriptures. You play Christian music and praise. You try to eliminate any sin in your life. Shut all the windows, shut all the doors. Don't let them demons come sliding in there through sin. Then you have to make it a point to where you're not fearful of those demons. There's a scripture that talks about the devil. We always think of him as a... Uh, uh, red with horns and a pitchfork, but actually it says we will look at him in astonishment and say, is he the one? Is he the one? Basically, is he the one that caused all these problems? Is he the one? We're going to just look at him like, huh, he was nothing. He He's not scary at all. Don't be fearful of any demon because the God of all things is on your side and he's got all his angels protecting you. That's awesome, isn't it? And you got the God of all things inside of you as well. Then also God gives us spiritual armor. Let's check out some of those scriptures pertaining to that. 1 John 4.18 There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. See, we see there that we need to be showing love. And then all of that will be casting out fear. The more you love, the more you love God, the more you love others. That fear is going to start to dissipate. You're not going to be scared anymore. You're going to be loving God so much that you put 100% trust in Him and His protection, and He does protect. Matter of fact, let's make them demons tremble. James 2.19 You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. They tremble at God. They tremble at the name of Jesus. Let's check that out. Mark 5, 1-13 Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, or a demon, who had his dwelling place among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him, and always night and day. He was in the mountains in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Also he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. Do you see what's happening here? These demons are scared of Jesus. Don't torment us. They're scared of Jesus. They still are today. Use his name. 
Use it with authority. Use it with power. Use it with boldness. The name of Jesus makes the demons tremble with fear. That should be exciting to you. That you have Jesus as a weapon in your arsenal to fight against the demons. Make them tremble. Don't you be scared of them, but you make them scared of you because you represent the King of Kings and you're going to use His name to bring fear to them. Acts 16, 16 through 18. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. The name of Jesus Christ, I command you. Command those spirits who are trying to attack you in your dreams. Wake up and say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You have no authority over this vessel. This vessel belongs to the Most High God. I have God indwelling within me. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Then they have to leave. They can't stay messing with you. Use it. Then Ephesians 10 through 20, this talks about the armor of God. Be sure to make sure you put it on before you go to bed and remember that you have it on throughout the night. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you may be able to quench all the fiery darts or arrows of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this sin with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak speak boldly to these demons say you have no place here you have no right to be on me you have no reason to be here because I represent Jesus Christ he is my Lord I serve the King of Kings I have the armor of God on me and I'm gonna fight you with the Word of God starts using scriptures to fight use that sword fight them off play Christian music in the background. They can't stand it. They're going to get out of there, trust me. And then you're going to have some sweet sleep. I'm going to put a link to my sweet sleep devotional that I made. Watch that video and hopefully you'll have some sweet sleep tonight. But thank you for watching and God bless you.